Steve, been praying for you this week. Uh, I know s- many members of the audience are doing the same. This is crazy what's about to happen to you tomorrow. Yeah, I've always been more worried about my unpaid parking tickets from college. You yeah, know? yeah. You are a you're a nice, gentle, regular guy. And do you even know what the charges are? No, they haven't told us yet. Uh, back, Is that usual? Uh, no, back uh, two and a half years ago when they initially uh, threatened me uh, and said that I would be arrested within the week in November of 21, they actually told my attorney at the time what the charges were going to be then. But because I'm a little outspoken and vocal about what's happening with me, uh, we were we were told at the time by an assistant U.S. attorney that a judge would not be happy with me you know, going out to the press in the manner that I've done. So I just intensified that and accelerated that and 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 lit that candle brighter uh yeah i know i see the look on your face i see the look on your face what right is it for them to say we're coming after you and then when you say hey by the way everybody they're saying they're coming after me they haven't said why they're coming after me this is all i've done why would why would you be in trouble for defending yourself in the public square because once they arrest you well, now you've been arrested by the FBI. It's a really bad thing, even if you're innocent. Well, two years ago, the U.S. attorney said to my my attorney that a judge will not look favorably upon this, to which my attorney responded, are you saying that my client should forego his First Amendment right under the threat of persecution from the federal government? And she said, oh, no, we're not really saying that. We just, you know, we just, oh. we, it's just we're concerned that, you know, for him oh, and his status. Oh, they're concerned I, no, I, for you. I, 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 I kid you not. Now, fast forward two years under the current threat, and they won't tell me the charges this time, literally, quote, unquote, from the U.S. attorney, because he'll tweet it out. Well, what? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do it for you. (laughs) Yeah. Technically, the charges are under seal until you're actually arrested. So they are technically not in violation of any law. Right. But so tomorrow morning at seven o'clock when I arrive at the FBI field office here in Dallas, I will learn what my charges are. And what is it that you are supposed to dress how are they? What what did they advice did they give you on that? They notified my attorney that I needed to arrive in shorts, a t shirt, and flip flops. And why is that? It's easier to change into the orange jumpsuit and leg chains. <laughs> and 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 um, is that something that? Everybody does. Do they when they bust down somebody's door? Do they say, "Hey, change into a t-shirt and some flip flops"? <laughs> I don't think that when they bust in your door, you get a you yeah. get that opportunity, when they, or that choice. When they invite people to turn themselves in, I, I've never seen people turn themselves in. You know, this is exactly what they did to the independent journalist Stephen Horn from Raleigh, North Carolina, coincidentally where I live. And when they arrested him. And they brought him in. They did exactly the same thing. They put him in an orange jumpsuit, put leg chains on him, and made him march before the magistrate in leg chains on misdemeanor offenses. That's one of the interesting parts here because uh, you don't know, as you point out, what you're being charged with. But you do know that they are misdemeanors, right? That is what they have told my attorney. So uh, why on earth would you need to be in leg chains and I mean, we, we we have prosecutors all over the country that won't charge people who've like sexually assaulted individuals with crimes and they won't hold them and they release the next day and they're going to put you in leg chains for misdemeanors. Well, let's let's start with the bigger question and we'll work our way to that specific uh, answer it is this is the first time in history since January 6th that the FBI is even involving themselves in misdemeanor offenses and with misdemeanor defendants. And swatting misdemeanor defendants with sometimes 15, 20, 25 agents swatting misdemeanor. No, they, the FBI has never done that in their history until ordered to do so by Merrick Garland's DOJ mm-hmm. after January 6th. So fast forward to this. Why are they doing that? Why are they requiring me? My, my attorney 
told me when he told me that this was what they were going to have me, uh, you know, requesting that I re- arrive dressed in flip flops and shorts. Uh, I said, why are they doing this to me? He said, you know why? He said, you've been poking them in the eye for three years. This is retribution. This is mm. evil. It's just evil. When, when you have a government, I mean, I don't know if you saw the story today from California, but there was a judge in California said, you can't arrest just people on the right when Antifa was there and they were being violent, beating up these people. Mm-hmm. You arrest the people they were beating up and you don't arrest Antifa. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, when, a, when, a, when a United States government can come after individuals. And, you know, we've been saying this from the beginning. If they'll do this to Trump, you don't think they'll do it to you? Well, the selective prosecution is exactly what's happening right here. We have uh, over 60, we have documented over 60 journalists that entered through those doors or broken windows that day. The fifth person through the broken window that day was a New York Times reporter. Uh, the New Yorker reporter Luke Mogelson went through the broken window, and he paralleled another independent photojournalist. They they went through the same window, paralleled the other journalist. He had spent uh, a lot of time working on the uh, Latinos for Trump uh, campaign. Well, even though he didn't parade, he didn't um, do any protesting, he did no chanting anything of the sort, and was contracted at the time as a video photojournalist for a TV station in Mobile, Alabama. Even though that was the groundwork laid, four misdemeanors swatted by over 20 agents at his home with red dots on his wife, his children, and of course, obviously himself at 6.30 in the morning. And then he was convicted. He said, I'm going to go to trial on this he said luke mogelson from the new yorker we went through the same window at the same time and he hasn't been charged i'm going to go stand before a judge he did a bench trial he was convicted on all four misdemeanors and because he went to trial and he wasted the government's time and resources and not taking the plea deal that he was offered uh the the judge put him in prison for eight months sentenced him to eight months they put him in a medium security facility in uh um Uh, Georgia, where after spending the first two months in solitary confinement and gets out into the general population, he learns from all the other prisoners that they never put misdemeanor defendants in that prison. All of the other guys were actually, they distrusted him. They thought he was some sort of plant, you know, inside the prison. They're like, people don't come here for misdemeanors. We're, you know, this is what we do for a living. We're pros. We go to prison, you know, we commit crimes and go to prison for a living. They, you're not supposed to be here. He goes, well, you are, if you're a J six defendant. So, mentally, how are you? I have my moments. Um, I'm okay. I, you know, I've had I've had over two years to prepare for this. I've game planned it all out in my head. Um, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm not even going to try. Uh, it's, it it is my way anyway, and so I'm just going to you know prepare, pray, and. Uh, and then I'm going to put on my suit and tie. Good for you. And walk in with my head up. Good for you. Good for you. Um, more in just a minute with Steve Baker. He's an investigative journalist, a Blaze Media correspondent. Uh, he has been, he's the guy who worked with Congress to expose the video that was being held back. Um. And for this, he is being arrested and arraigned tomorrow in what city? Uh, here in Dallas. Here in Dallas. Will it happen? Will the trial happen here in Texas? No. Uh, <laughs> we will certainly be filing a motion for change of venue out of D.C., but none of those have been granted yet on J6 Jeez. cases. Because they know they can't win right. anyplace else. It is, it's, a, it's amazing to me, Steve, um, that I'm doing an interview with a man that I know is innocent, who I know is a journalist, who I know just did the job of being a journalist, and tomorrow might be your first day going to jail and then prison. You know, I'll correct you on one thing. There's 60 of us that are guilty. 
uh, we we are guilty of crossing a restricted line, and that is common for law enforcement to allow the press to come inside the police line. I was going to, to say, document the public interest. Correct. There is no license. There is no credential. There is no press pass on the the planet, and you are in the United States of America, local state or federal that allows any journalist to cross a restricted line but over 60 did and only those whose voice is more on the right side of the political spectrum are being prosecuted no one from the left so what is your i mean if you care to share it what's your game plan i think that the first thing we have to do is find out who our judge is um, that's the most important aspect, uh, it's, and it's the first major piece of the puzzle, uh, because the the judges and the the J six lottery are are <laughs> they come in all all shapes and sizes mm-hmm. and intensities. So it, it'll depend upon whether we get a hanging judge or we get one of the more reasonable common sense. Let's say you judges. get a hanging judge and they offer you a deal. That'll that'll be very tempting if it's one of the hanging judges to take the deal. Because we already know what the threat of not taking the deal is, is that would be a superseding indictment that would include a felony. Because they're going to punish you. They don't want to work. They're government employees. They don't want to do a trial. <laughs> what kind of what, what kind of felony? What would they come up with as uh, a felony? It, it could be the one that's currently before the Supreme Court, the 1512 obstruction of official, uh, an official proceeding. Uh, they could uh, dig. dig. Well, first of all, show me the man and show you the crime. That yeah, they can no, come yeah. up with anything. So right. they, they, they could go back years and years uh, on tax records. They could, they could do anything. So it's, it's not a matter of what could it possibly be that I did that day. It, it's going to be something else. But that is the punishment, and it is the threat, and they have used it in other January 6th cases. Jeez. I know you've done a lot of work, Steve, going back on your, when you're doing your reporting, and looking through all these videos and you've been able to isolate a bunch of really interesting things that mm-hmm. no one knew about that exonerate that exonerate a lot of people uh-huh. and take down the police and you know whoever they were FBI agents or whoever they were and there's more coming as a matter of fact I just heard from a senior congressional aide this morning that there will be a very significant release tomorrow that's all he gave me permission to say that I could say on the air today. And some of that has to do and it intersects with my work. Wow. Hmm. My question though was, do we see video of you? Because oh, yeah. Will we find, will we see this? Because I think they want to paint this idea that you were not a journalist at this at this event. And, it, and yep. I think it would be pretty clear, as you see, said, there's cameras everywhere. Yep. All this is, you've got to be on camera all over the place. Were you doing something different than the New York Times reporters who were there? I am happy to say that myself and the Blaze team back in December, we harvested a day in the life of me. Ah. Capital CCTV cameras. Great. And we will be showing that. Mm. Excellent. Every second of me inside the Capitol doing my job, never participating in any parading, milling around, you know, or, or as they say, uh, um, uh, you know, picketing, um, protesting, never chanting, none of that. We have it all on film. That's fantastic. Incredible. Now, now, if you have a hanging judge, will that judge allow that to be? I mean, the fact that these cases have not been overturned, the minute we started seeing video where you're like, wait a minute, that makes that guy innocent. Yeah. And they didn't allow the attorney to have that or see that or use that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the fact that those haven't been overturned yet is a real crime, a real crime. And we're continuing to work on that process. I will tell you that there is ever more evidence of the insane corruption at the top of the Capitol Police, which is which is holding back these yeah. final uh, series of documents that we need to bring justice in that those particular cases that you're referring to. Uh, they are more powerful than Congress itself. I never believed that. I had Capitol Police officers, my sources, 
unnamed and and known that have told me over and over and over again you do not understand how powerful the capitol police are so i'm thinking to myself okay okay you know, You're right. you know, okay right right and then i i talk with speaker johnson and speaker johnson tells me to you know his lips to my ears that he says i have 100 percent authority over the the distribution of those videos i can i can either let them out or not it's, it's all it's all on me and then all of a sudden they stop there's not been anything released in weeks and suddenly it stops. Get back with my sources. They said, I told you, it's the Capitol Police. Why is the Capitol Police so powerful? They know where all the bodies are buried. They know who buried them. They know who's sleeping with who. They know everything. Jeez. And they are the, they are the personal security guards of Congress. It's That's why they're so powerful. It's amazing that uh, it was said that this is Nancy Pelosi's police force the speaker has control Mm -hmm. well she might have but according to you Johnson doesn't there's somebody more powerful than him Uh, all right best of luck we'll keep you in your prayer uh, in in our prayers and uh, please please stay in touch and tell us how we can help well we're not going to stop working so I'll tell you that Thank you. And we'll try to get you a flip-flop sponsorship. So yeah. you, Can we do that? Yeah, yeah we're going to work yeah, on yeah. that for you. You need an orange <laughs> jumpsuit to make it even easier for the feds. Call this number. <laughs>